Hello, my name is Dr John Newstead. I'm a soil scientist working at Delta T Devices. Uh, we design and manufacture environmental monitoring equipment and one of our unique selling points is our range of soil moisture sensors. So today we're in the lovely surroundings of Cambridge Lakes Golf Club, which is just outside central Cambridge. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, ML3 Theta Kit. Here we go. It's a kit ideal for measuring turf in sports environments. And uh, I'd like to also get over some of our tips for how to use it, get the best out of the kit. Okay, so here we are, ML3 Theta Kit in its nice carry case. Comes with a range of manuals. And we have the HH2 handheld portable meter. We have the ML3 Theta Probe sensor itself, uh, some spare pins, spare battery, some download cables, and it comes obviously with its own connected cable. But before we actually go through um, how to set this up and how to actually use it and get the most out of it, it's important to actually understand why you'd want to use this type of kit in the first place. So this is all about trying to uh, optimise the growing conditions on your green. So you might be optimising for performance as ball roll and bounce is affected by moisture content. You could be optimising for the look of the green. Uh, you could be um, looking at your water use efficiency, for instance. Um, so trying to put water on where it's needed, when it's needed, um, perhaps checking the evenness of irrigation across your green. Whichever case it is, each, each may actually require a different target moisture content. So it's important to actually consult with your uh, sports turf agronomist um, before you actually uh, use, use a kit. Okay, so why actually use the Theta Probe? So it's a gold standard sensor. So it's proven, long established proven, it's used all over the world where um, data, data management, data usage is important. Um, it's very easy to, to insert into turf. It's got uh, four sharp little pins. Okay, these insert easily into um, turf. Uh, I think are much better than having fat chunky pins. Uh, for that purpose. Um, it's a very lightweight sensor, it's very robust and it's very robust because the origins of this were in research, it's been used in some really quite extreme environments so we can now take that into the sort of sports turf and it seems to work very well. Um, it, as I'm going to show you in a moment it's very easy to use, it's very easy to train with, you can just go out, take a few, send someone out, take a few measurements, job done. Um, and importantly, this also comes with a five-year warranty. So when you consider all those things put together, I think this is easy to use, reliable, robust, five-year warranty. It's a very hard package to actually beat. Okay, so before we actually go out onto the green and use the uh, ML3 Theta kit, we actually need to just quickly set up the HH2 handheld portable meter. This is a really straightforward process. Uh, I'm just going to show you here on camera. Hopefully you can actually see that screen. First thing we do is switch it on by pressing escape. Then we need to tell it we're going to use the ML3 Theta Probe, the sensor. So we press set, scroll down to device, set. And then on this is a list of all the sensors that Delta T have got programmed in here. And we are looking for ML3. There we go, you press set. Then we tell it what calibration we want. Well, we want to use mineral calibration. So we go to soil type. It's already been programmed on this case, so we'll press set. Then importantly, you've got to tell it what you want to actually display. And in this case, we're going to scroll down to the display. We want volumetric moisture content. Okay, so we'll press set. And that's it, very straightforward, it's very simple. You don't need to do that again. And you can go out now into the field and take readings. Okay, so let's take a reading. So we've obviously already set up our HH2 handheld portable meter. We want to insert the sensor pins all the way into the soil, very straightforward, and then we press read. Okay, and that will give you your, your soil moisture value. But when doing this, it's very important to uh, understand that the pins need to be fully inserted. So just to the right of the meter here, I've got uh, an ML3 probe that I've only inserted halfway. I'm now going to press read and it says 16.2% volumetric moisture content. So 16.2% of the volume being sampled is water. Then we push it in so that the pins are fully inserted, but the sensor is just resting on the soil surface. And we'll press read again, we'll just clear that screen. We could have stored it, you notice there's a store option. Press read, and it suddenly says 21.6%. So that in my mind is the actual reading. Now often, if you push further, 
let me just push down a bit more. You can hear me straining there. And then press read again. We don't need to save that. And you can see it's changed. This volumetric moisture content now says 22.7. Often you might get a dramatically different reading. And that's because if you push in too hard, okay, you forced in that sensor, um, you are actually compressing and changing the way the, the soil is organised underneath the turf. And that's what you don't want to do. You want to know what the actual moisture content is as it is in its natural state without being interfered with. So get the protocol right. Push your pins in so that the, sense, the pins are fully inserted and the sensor is just resting on the soil surface. Don't force it in any more than you need to, but don't leave the pins exposed to air. Another important consideration at this point is when you've taken your reading and you do that simply by just pressing read at this stage, is when you withdraw the probe, put it straight out at the same angle you pushed it in at. Okay, if you don't and you go to walk off, you're going to twist the probe as you pull it out. And simply that could damage your pins. I know the kit comes with spare pins, um, but that would be uh, unnecessary uh, damage. So push it in in a straight, straight in, put it out at the same angle. The other important point to note here, we don't have any handle for this particular probe, which is encourages you to get down close to your green. And I think this is a very important point because I think we spend too much of our time distancing ourselves from the green. When you push this probe in, you can feel the green. You can feel uh, some of its, how it's performing. And this is helping you to understand your green, understand to characterize your green. Being more hands-on, I think is a really good thing. When using a, uh, an ML3 Theta kit, it's very important before you go out onto your green to work out your sampling strategy because you have a whole range of options. You could sample in a transect. That means taking readings across from one side to the other at various points on your green. You could use a W pattern and just sample in a W pattern to try and understand the distribution nature of, wa of water um, across your greens. You could, of course, just separate your green up into grids, which I think a lot of agronomists do. Um, alternatively, you could just sample areas of interest. But because this is such an important part of uh, sampling, uh, my advice would be always go and speak to your sports turf agronomist first, then go out onto the green with your kit. Okay, so let's just briefly summarize. The ML3 Theta kit, it gives you accurate, reliable and robust data. But it's very important to realise that this does not make the management decisions for you. Okay? This empowers you to make better management decisions. Okay? So reliable, robust, accurate, but it is empowering you to make better management decisions. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you would like to find out more, please do visit the Delta T website.